represent NASA, an architecture to represent deformable articulated bodies with neural networks. Computer vision has recently made huge progresses in human understanding. We have moved from representing humans as a collection of 2D key points to dense image space representations, 3D surface parameterized by pose and shape, and to even account for joint human scene perception. We propose a model for digital representation of 3D humans that's learnable in a fully end-to-end -end fashion. As input, we expect a collection of coordinate frames. These are also called bones. Our model outputs a post-conditional occupancy function which can be queried at a point x. We take inspiration from recent research that proposed to represent 3D model with implicit functions. In particular, as shown in the cross-section, occupancy functions answer queries like is the point x inside or outside the object. Hence, the model's surface becomes a particular iso level of the function. In contrast, traditional 3D digital humans are represented by a control skeleton defining the structure of motion, a polygonal mesh defining this surface, and skinny weights that bind motions to the surfaces. All of these are designed by artists. The notion of inside-outside is important in many applications, but post-processing meshes to compute occupancies is non-trivial and computationally intensive. When self-intersections exist, it might be as difficult as computing generalized winding numbers. In this talk, we cover two main topics. We investigate how to represent articulate objects with neural networks. We then use these representations to power classical 3D vision tracking tasks. Let's start from representation learning. We leverage recent development in neural implicit 3D representations. These models are trained by querying random samples in space computing the occupancy predicted by the network, and then comparing whether the inside-outside label matches the ground truth. If a surface representation is needed, it's usually extracted by isosurfacing. To train our model, we employ the recently introduced AMAS dataset. This dataset contains a large variety of digital human subjects as well as animations. For each frame, we sample points in the neighborhood of the mesh as well as in the bounding box volume. We then compute the inside-outside label by tracing array from each point. Our first model is a simple adaptation of recent neural implicit representations. The model is a simple chain of fully connecting layers. For example, we could use the chain et al. architecture. It receives as input a point coordinate concatenated with a feature vector and outputs a scalar occupancy. To improve on this design, we take inspiration from graphics. In graphics, it's common to represent objects as a collection of rigid parts. Each of the implicit occupancy networks represents a rigid part. Note we query the implicit function in its local coordinate frame B. We obtain the fully shape by merging the parts via a max operator. Humans are not made of rigid parts, and to allow each body part to deform according to pose, we add a pose feature in input to each of the part occupancy networks. While the learned projection pi allows the network to learn localized deformations, this mimics the design of post-dependent deformations that's widely used in graphics. We train our model by a combination of two losses. A standard square loss is used as the major objective to ensure correct object reconstruction. A width loss is also used to weakly supervise part decomposition. It transfers the sparse part labels from the rest pose scanning ways to data poses so that our models can split the objects into proper parts for local modeling, which results in better performance. We now qualitatively and quantitatively visualize the performances on unseen motions. The rigid model already provides a staggering 70% improvement in F-score performance, while the seemingly small 3% boost of the deformable model can be noticed in the animations. Overall, with 99% in F-score, NASA is close to matching the representation quality of traditional computer graphics. We start by studying the performance of the baselines regarding neural capacity. Notice that the unstructured model struggles across the entire range, and its performance quickly saturates as the model size decreases. We also analyze the inference performance of different baselines. The rare surface areas visualize the number of neural connections of unstructured versus structured architectures. This results in significant improvement in inference time. One might ask why the linear projections are needed in our model. If we implement a deformable model without projections, the performance is 2% worse than in the simpler rigid model. 
while weight projections enabled, we gain 4%. We now show how to employ these representations in a classical 3D computer vision task. In particular, we focus on dense generative tracking. We take inspiration from DPSDF by Park et al. DPSDF first learns an implicit 3D representation across a shape collection. Then, given a point cloud, the optimization searches for the shape code within the latent space so that the model fits to the data. The process is guided by a simple regularizer. Dense generative tracking has a very similar structure. It can be described as an optimization problem with fitting and prior terms. The solver seeks a pose so that the deformed model fits the point cloud. Let's start by looking at the fitting energy. Most techniques use a fitting energy of this form, which relies on the ability to compute sign distances of 3D points. To compute this efficiently, passworks rely on representations like rigid bodies, sphere meshes, or articulated distance fields. We employ an alternative formulation where the neural implicit is convolved with a Gaussian kernel. But wouldn't this operation require us to evaluate expensive 3D convolutions? Actually not. We show that this term can be written as a simple expectation. Hence, our fitting energy revaluation requires us to first jitter the point cloud with some Gaussian noise and then query our post conditional occupancy at these points. Note all of these operands in this expression have straightforward gradients. Finally, for the prior term, we simply ask the tracker to preserve limb lengths. More complex priors could be easily integrated here as well. We now have everything we need to perform generative tracking with neural networks. Note that we only optimize the pose to track a point cloud. The networks that represent the object have frozen weights. Given an input point cloud, we fit our neural model to the points and recover the coordinate frames. To conclude, we propose a neural network to represent deformable articulated bodies. We provide a drastic improvement in representation quality compared to the state of the art, and introduce a way to model post space deformations in neural implicit models. We also show how our model can be used in complex dense tracking tasks in just a few lines of code. Our method can be improved in several ways. We would like to generalize the model beyond a single subject and understand how to also capture high frequency surface details. Finally, we would like to further reduce our supervision to be able to also learn the input coordinate frames and remove the reliance on scanning weights. Our source code is available at nasa-ecv20.github.io. Thank you for watching.